in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Ladies and gentlemen, find comfort tonight. You are sowing. Every farmer endures. There are plants that will take years before they yield. Am I right on that? There are plants that within maybe a few weeks, a month, two, 90 days max, they've already produced. But there are certain giant trees that you will keep watering, you will keep pruning, sometimes to your frustration. But yours is to be patient because when it begins to yield, after 60 years, a hundred years, it is still standing. This looks like the kind of destiny someone is building in this place. You are watering every week. Watering every week. Watering every week in fastings, in prayer, in study of the word, in giving, in sacrifice. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of God is doing something. For someone, it may even be your church. You do not even know all the while, while you are seated here, that one day you will be such a great man of God. But God keeps telling you, keep coming, keep building. This is beyond loyalty to a ministry. This is beyond membership. This is destiny. Let me repeat myself. Now you will understand better that the end of this journey called Jesus the end of this journey called faith, the end of this journey called obedience is glory. Say glory. glory. One more time, say glory. As loud as you can, say glory. glory. This is what God is breathing through your life. The glory of God is a capture of everything that is contained in God and can be revealed through the saints. His wealth is his glory. His wisdom is his glory. His goodness is his glory. His power is his glory. Are we together now? Yes. So show me a believer who has chosen with understanding to be a sower and to sow to the spirit. No matter what is around that believer right now, listen to me, the end of it, you will be making a big mistake if you laugh and mock at that believer. Because when you see the kind of bumper harvest that comes, and how many of you know that the soil of the spirit will always produce in an accelerated dimension? So one day, the ordinary gentleman coming week in, week out, sitting, praying, fasting, building, receiving instructions in righteousness. One service you will come like any other service, not knowing that the fullness of time has come for you. Not for everybody. The Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there are seasons that fully come. And it differs from person to person. You may come sitting quietly. I came for koinonia and that day, the mantle, the grace, the anointing for your destiny. It arrived church before you and was waiting, hovering round from place to place. Suddenly it finds you. And from that meeting, all that is seen through your life is a measure of glory that you yourself cannot explain. You come to church an ordinary person and leave a prophet fully formed by the Spirit. You come to church as an ordinary person, but live with a mysterious healing anointing that begins to announce you to the nations. You come as an ordinary person. Finally, that grace for kingdom, wealth, and abundance lands upon your life. Listen, that is why it is dangerous when men miss their days of visitation because it is not given to you to know the exact day we are mandated to be faithful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faithfulness is that quality that helps you to continue even when you have not seen the result. Knowing that God is not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that he should. 
reminds me many years ago i think one of our crusades that we had small crusade and on the first day if i recall there was a particular lady or so woman who wanted to be healed and sadly she was not healed that first day and my people then they tried prayed over the person and nothing exactly happened and i think it was by the second day or the final day of the crusade that woman got healed now if she had turned after the first day and said well that's all right she would have missed that opportunity are we together i'm saying this so that your heart will be convinced that i am not wasting my time when i'm in the presence of god this is something believers must be mentored into understanding because when people come to church most times they either come to see the man of god or they come sometimes just for the ceremony or they come because they are workers or they come because they are loyal to the ministry none of these reasons are wrong in themselves except that that is too small a reason for the kind of commitment you are investing in your destiny it must be number one that you love the lord jesus but number two you know I am a sower you are tired from the office and you still have to come to church for hours I am a sower I am a sower I'm sowing to the spirit I'm sowing so that my children will reap what I had no opportunity of reaping I am a sower oh you come in and the auditorium is already full it doesn't matter the overflow or outside I will still sit and be diligent I am a sower I reject offense I am a sower I am here to serve the Lord I am a sower condition favorable or otherwise i am a sower when this becomes your mentality you will maximize when you come to church versus someone who comes to church and is careless spiritually and physically that kind of person will only share the grace and go back either ways you are still a sower except that you may not know what you are sowing until you see an ugly harvest rising and god tells you god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows. Are we together? Yeah. Whatsoever a man soweth. The assignment of the man of God is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and hand you superior quality seeds because the sower soweth the seed and the Bible says that seed is the word of God. So as I bring you the word of God in season, among the many things I'm doing is that I'm handing you the seed that you will sow you will do the sowing are we together yeah and there are people who sow seeds and throw it on any kind of soil and it does not produce and others are meticulous they receive the seed with every sense of preciousness knowing that this seed I have now can grow to become a giant oak tree that I will eat from and those who come after me can eat from please lay your hands on your head and cry for the spirit of discernment Lord I am here as a sower grant me the grace to receive precious seed and to sow it with wisdom that I will sow to the spirit so that I will of the spirit reap life everlasting someone is praying the grace to participate in every aspect of the service remaining in prayer in listening in receiving by faith I receive seed I receive seed rebuke the spirit of distraction rebuke the spirit of slumber rebuke distractions of all sorts that when the word comes i give it rapt attention knowing that my destiny and indeed the destiny of those connected to me depends on the truth that i receive hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen thank you and you see the interesting thing is that in the presence of god one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit as touching the ministry of the word is to breathe upon your faculty. Listen, so that you are able to understand the truth that is communicated regardless your level of education, regardless your level of intellectual exposure. That means if you did not have the, the opportunity to be enlightened in terms of the way to broaden 
your faculty of understanding you should not be punished because of that limitation so the holy spirit grants something called utterance utterance is not oratory oratory is your own labor as a man of god to learn to use words to transfer thoughts effectively and i've taught you that effective communication enhances the understanding of the people but there is a spiritual quality given to men called utterance the ability to make everyone see and understand what you are saying it is utterance that is responsible for inventing the examples that suddenly come out of your spirit it is utterance that is responsible for helping you communicate the truth sometimes it manifests as a song sometimes it manifests as a repetition of the points sometimes it manifests as an example that suddenly someone who may not be as literate just nods and said I finally got it that one is not creativity it is utterance and it is a gift and the assignment of that grace according to Ephesians 3 and verse 9 is to make all men see it can open the eyes of men so that they see and they understand hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the Lord has been challenging me and putting a very strong burden in my heart and among the end time strategies that God is revealing as a prophetic blueprint to his body please listen there are three areas that I've heard the Lord repeatedly drum in my spirit that the saints need to rise to a higher level of understanding of. Number one is dominion over unclean spirits. This is an aspect of the faith life that in truth believers have not yet had a thorough understanding as to the spiritual dynamics that control dominion over unclean spirits oh please let your spirit be open tonight in the name of jesus christ dominion over unclean spirits in as much as we confess that this is a fact in christ and i'm coming there shortly most believers experientially are yet to walk in that reality dominion over unclean spirits number two dominion over sickness and disease this is the second area the spirit of god has been drumming into my spirit it's like there is a unique grace that is being released over the body of christ to bring men and women into a higher understanding empowerment to manifest dominion in this area dominion over sickness and disease hallelujah the rate of people who get healed, whether medically or supernaturally, with respect to those who have been, or relative to those who have been oppressed by Satan, is very small. The Spirit of God wants to, to close that margin. Are we together now? There should not be 100 people suffering from sicknesses, cancer, like we prayed over, or some demonic thing, and then you'd have just one testimony. Whereas the remaining people, it does not look like victory. The character of victory is that it always dominates. Are we together now? Yeah. Dominion over sickness and disease. Number three. The third area that the Spirit of God has been putting a strong emphasis, and this is for the body of Christ, is dominion over resources. These three areas, dominion over resources. That if you must survive the end times with all the onslaughts that the devil is bringing upon the nations, it is important for us to be reoriented, re-educated, to understand in truth from scripture and completely so the dynamics that govern dominion over unclean spirits, dominion over sicknesses and diseases, dominion over resources because these three god revealed to me will be satan's greatest tool before jesus returns the attack that is coming on the body of christ will be along these three areas 
our inability to understand how to establish victory over spirits all kinds of satanic spirits and you'll be learning something powerful shortly will keep many families and many people bound in spite of prophetic words prophetic confessions fastings and prayer and you'll find out that satan seeks or seems to be gaining dominance even over the lives of believers and then number two is the body of believers the greatest way that god is mocked in the life of the believer is when he's alive and begins to deteriorate in the presence of everybody it is an indictment on the love of god the character of god and the power of god that satan brings an individual and makes a caricature out of that person and a mysterious sickness is eating your body and has no medical explanation and it even becomes more indicting if that believer loves jesus because you will search for the explanation as to why that person should be in that condition everything the person should do to avoid that condition usually he or she will tell you i have done it i've loved the lord i've given seeds and many times when these things happen as men of god sometimes we feel embarrassed to admit that we are limited ourselves so we create all kinds of theological explanations like i'm sure you don't have faith i do not agree I do not agree it is not always a faith problem believe me there is something we do not know that has not brought us into higher levels of power and you will be learning something really powerful this night I'm praying for you that what you will learn tonight will help you to put every demonic spirit every manifestation of darkness that has plagued you hitherto that you will not only do it for your sake but you will do it for the sake of everyone around you in the name of Jesus Christ praise the name of the Lord if you were to do a TV interview for me and you ask me Joshua Selman what do you think is the major problem of the average believer today my response to that question will be number one I think and I wrote it here that the believer does not have a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption holistically presented the first problem of the average believer is not zeal is not passion there is a very severe bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption hallelujah there is not just there is a way God should be known but there is also a way a believer should grow and look at me please it is a dangerous thing to start helping a believer in his faith journey and then all you introduce him to is responsibility it is dangerous the foundation of the believers work is not an awareness of his responsibility the foundation of the believers work is what Christ has done and until the believer understands Christ that way he will keep seeing God as a selfish self-centered God who is only out to save so he can use and that narrative about God is not proper and from that narrative will come all kinds of weaknesses people who have exerted power and dominion in the body of Christ past and present are people whose foundation was properly laid are we together now and the foundation was having a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption everything that captures Jesus his coming his earth walk the significance of his death the significance of his burial his resurrection his ascension and enthronement and what that means to the believer today what the believer has now become in light of that reality you will never be able to rise to become a champion in the kingdom if that is not the foundation of your understanding it matters at what point in your life you learn that truth so there are many people who their first approach to the knowledge of the things of the spirit is warfare so their concept of warfare with all due respect is already a journey that will end up in repeatable recyclable defeats because the basis upon which that warfare should be administered was not even known in the first place 
So it becomes an endless journey of boxing Satan and watch if he will reply. And then I box him again. How many did you give him? Two. How many did he reply? Five. Oh, you need to step up. So that narrative produces weak believers. Praying from the lens of weakness. Fasting from the lens of weakness. Confessing the word from the lens of weakness. Is someone learning already? Then on the other hand, you have people who have these fundamentals but then in addition to these fundamentals unfortunately they remain at that level and so they keep seeing all the things that the word of god says are finished and have been credited to the believers account but never walk in the reality of any of them it is more frustrating to know what should be and not have the power to make it manifest so you hear a lot of confession in church. In Jesus' name, I can't be sick. In Jesus' name, I can't be poor. But then you are seeing the life of that person confessing daily and progressively tending toward what he says he's not. And then, you know, we preachers sometimes say, just continue, just you keep, don't worry about what is happening. And the person says, are you joking? I'm going through pain and you say, I should not worry about it. One day I have to worry about it and say, what is wrong? Many people continued like that till they died. Others continued till they failed. Others continued till they backslided. Others continued till they insulted God and walked out of the Christian faith. And became advocates through their anger that don't mind this church thing. These guys are just a bunch of, of liars who want to manipulate members to get gain. It matters how your spiritual understanding is constructed so back to my interview you ask me the question what is the challenge with the average believer my first response is that there is a bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption and let me tell you the truth um i think for the average believer in our generation we had our understanding about what we call redemption realities from largely and with all due respect what we call the word of faith movement in partnership with the charismatic movement because of their inclination to the word and the ministry of the holy spirit so the average believer had his understanding about redemption realities from the lens of those who came from this movement and they taught many powerful and wonderful things fathers like Kenneth He again, T.L. Osborne, and these great men, they demonstrated that they understood what they knew. But let me tell you the truth. God remains constant, but his system of upgrading men to light is progressive. That means every generation should see clearer and farther than the previous generation. It becomes an embarrassment if the fathers see greater than us. It means we are not growing because they have, we have the advantage of their scars and their shoulders to climb upon plus the advantage of the Holy Spirit. We should be able to see something they did not see as clear. And one of the major issues with the revelation of redemption realities as we have in the body of Christ is that there is a thorough un misunderstanding of the believer's authority in Christ. I have studied materials again and again as to the understanding of the believer's authority. Most believers are just blindly mentored that we have authority in Christ and that is true. We are like Christ and that is true. We are gods and that is true. And most believers stop there but it is a random thought that is just emotionally received. Most people do not even understand what that statement means. What does it mean to have or to be in authority? Question two, what is the jurisdiction of the authority? What is Satan allowed to do and what is he not allowed to do? What can the believer do and what can the believer not do? For instance, when the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Or number two, the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. Do you know what that means? I have taught you here, but for the sake of this, this topic we're dealing with now, it is not everything God has and God is that he gave man. 
are we together when the bible calls us partakers of his divine nature that is a fact but it is not every part of god that he gave man there are certain dimensions of god that he did not share with man these are the dimensions of God that brands him exclusive to himself. For instance, the quality of omniscience, the ability to know all things, God did not give man. Number two, omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere at the same time. That is a dimension of God he did not give man. Are we together? Number three, omnipotence. Man is not all powerful. Our authority in the kingdom is not absolute. It is derived. It's a product of a relationship and it can be lost. So when a believer exercises authority in the kingdom, it's not something that was invented outside of God's participation. It is a product of your relationship, a flow that comes from him to you. Are we together now? Yes. So you see, when the Bible tells us that we are partakers of his divine nature, if the believer is not educated to understand the full implication, you will start doing a lot of heretic practices that will only leave you confused yourself and then to confuse others. The fact that we are partakers of his divine nature or one with Christ or seated with Christ, the word seated with Christ here is a spiritual reality, but is also a, is just a, a way, a graphic representation of how one we have become with him. Are we together now? Yeah. So if you ask the average believer, you are seated with Christ, he will say, yes, you have authority. Yes, over thrones, dominions, every name that is named. Yes, but now to manifest that authority becomes a serious problem. How then do I walk in the reality of that power, that authority in experience? Number two, <laughs> Satan. Let's talk about Satan in one minute. What? No, don't write, just listen. what kind and what level of authority did god give man over satan what are you allowed to do to satan and what are you not allowed to do to satan i hope you know that you cannot do everything listen this is why most believers don't have results the concept of the authority of the believer has jurisdictions and it has rules of engagement. Just because you have authority does not mean you say everything and the realm of the spirit respects it. There is a rule of engagement. If you do not understand this, your spiritual labor will be futile and you will never, never be able to walk in power. I give you an instance. There is nowhere in scripture where you have authority as a believer to gather all the demons on earth in one place and chain them and hinder their operations indefinitely. That provision is not given the believer. Do you know why? Because there is a level of liberty that Satan has. There is an allotment of time. His final judgment has not yet been meted out. It's in the Bible. Even the demons had this. Remember the madman in Gadara? Matthew's account when there were two madmen who came, they said, have you come to destroy us before our time they were talking to jesus you are obedient to prophecy there is a timing to it when jesus walked upon the earth there were things he did with satan there were things he did with demons but there were things he did not do and jesus came as a pattern man to help the believer to know how to exercise authority in a profitable way the number one law for exercising authority is the knowledge of jurisdiction you need to know what is the jurisdiction of my authority. Is someone learning tonight? So for instance, in scripture, believers are given power over unclean spirits. Believers are given power against unclean spirits. What does power over mean? What does power against mean? What can I do with Satan? And what can't I do with Satan? For instance, you cannot destroy Satan. It's not given to you. Of course, now, I know that especially ministries that are inclined to deliverance, they may use words like die or Satan will destroy you. Sometimes you may even hear us preachers say it. We just say it on believing that members know what we mean. Are we together now? But classically speaking, Satan, you are not the one who will destroy Satan. Are we together now? 
there is a judgment that will be meted out by God's divine justice. And when that happens, Satan together with all his cohorts will be judged and destroyed eternally. This is what the Bible teaches. So in the meantime, the believer, you have the authority to number one, withhold the potency of Satan from performing within your life and within a predefined jurisdiction for you. For instance, I can, as an intercessor, ward off the activities of demon spirits over Abuja, over Nigeria. We are given that liberty in Christ through the ministry of prayer, standing upon the authority that is in Christ. Because remember, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go with that consciousness that the jurisdiction of your authority is right from the second heavens down to the earth. Everywhere within that spiritual climate, your authority will work. Another example, you cannot command, I know we do that, you cannot command any being aside from angels in heaven to respond to you. That liberty is not given to you. You cannot get up and command the four living creatures, command the 24 elders to do anything for you. Are you seeing that now? They can move, they can walk, but that is not within the jurisdiction. The authority of the believer is over spirits and the spirits are defined. Unclean spirits, angelic forces, and it is not even to command. It's to make decrees and they have been mandated to back you. They don't follow you, they follow the word of God. So it makes it look like they are obeying you, but they are not slaves. Are we together now? Yes. They are not slaves. They bring performance to the world. So they are not there to foil your lust. Angels, beat this person because I am angry. No, they are not stupid. Once it is not consistent with the will of God, they don't have an assignment to obey it. Are we together now? Is someone learning now? So the average believer does not have a thorough understanding of authority. So you have, because of this inaccurate understanding, there have been many variations in terms of exercising authority. There are those who believe that once you speak once, Satan has heard it forever. And that understanding is based on the fact that, okay, if I declare he heard me, he will never hear me again. There are those who now respond to such call and say, you are joking. You will soon learn that you are playing. And then they say, this warfare is continuous. It does not end. What was Satan allowed to do to the believer? And what was he not allowed to do? What is the believer allowed to do in terms of exercising authority over spirits? You, we want to learn authority, you have to examine the life of Jesus because Jesus is the most accurate portrait of God in terms of exercising authority. The prophets and all the people before him and after him because they were men, the Bible never gave a word of approval for them from God. So we know that Jesus came as a pattern man to reveal to the believer how to walk in authority. When you notice that in casting out devils, Jesus never told the spirits where to go to. Only once that he, got, he granted their request because they wanted to enter swine. And he did not say go, he just said go. Every time Jesus casted spirits, he did not define a place for them to go and stay. In fact, if Jesus said anything, he gave us intelligence that spirits have the liberty of mobility. Mobility from any place back to the vessel that they came out from. That when a spirit is casted out of a man, is that in your Bible? That he goes through dry regions and not finding a place, he will say, let me go back to my house. And if he finds it swept and clean but empty, he will get seven other spirits more deadly than itself and return back so that the latter part of that man's life. No wonder you can find people who receive miracles. And then after a while, they go back and their conditions become worse. Jesus gave us an explanation because I have taught you that deliverance does not end by just casting out the spirit influence. When the spirit influence leaves, that is step one. The second phase of deliverance is that the light of God's word must come to give the person a now superior spiritual orientation. And by so doing it to close that door. And then the third dimension of deliverance is called the discipline of conformity, where you now have the responsibility of cooperating with the word 
to walk in light with the things and the practices that keep Satan at bay. Are we learning now? So the average believer, I can tell you in church, is zealous, loves God, is sincere. But many people may never rise to God's standard, that prophetic potential, because we have not learned properly the fundamentals of redemption. We have a head knowledge. We have a theological knowledge. We can recite what Jesus did. But an understanding of how to convert that reality to become our experience, many believers are at a loss. So we have people who command angels anyhow. I command these angels do this and that and that and sometimes you know just because we are given authority and angels minister to the saints there is a modus operandi are we together there are those who even command God and then mistakenly we use the scripture that says as touching the works of my hand command ye me those things were just error in translation you cannot command God no when I was teaching you um, let them have dominion. I taught you that when people say God himself is limited until we authorize him, uh, they are sincere, but it's not an accurate spiritual understanding. What we do is not to command God. What we do is to partner with him. You think partnership, not authority over God. Are we together? So I cannot command God because he made me ruler in the earth. No. When God limits his operation until my participation, it is not because he is weak. It's that he has designed a system to incorporate me every time he's functioning on the earth. It's not a product of weakness. Of weakness. It is his wisdom designed to make sure that I participate in that dominion process. But that if God decides to bypass me, he's still just because the earth is still his own. You see that now? So he says, if you will not praise me, it is not the usual rule, but I can raise up stones. Literally and prophetically, I can raise up stones to praise me. Is someone learning now? So the average believer needs, listen, if you want to build a believer to be a person of stature, he needs to come into an understanding of what Jesus has done. When you tell somebody that while you were yet a sinner, unable to help yourself, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel that Jesus saw you he loved you and he came to you not demanding that you give him his life because of the threat for hell he loves you and he's giving you an opportunity to be a partaker of his life and the only thing you have to do is to believe that he loved you enough and died for you and that in saying yes to him among the many things that happen to you is that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son now you have been vested with life eternal alongside authority the potential to manifest the god life has now been given to you that is why the gospel is called good news hallelujah now the person can say you mean with all this my life of drinking smoking all this my life of drugs all this my life of killing and destruction jesus can love someone like me you say yes step one when you bring such a person now the danger is if that is the only theology that remains with that person there is trouble because the next assignment is to know that now you are we are not saved by good works but we are saved unto good works that when you now become a believer in christ the next thing is that you will begin to understand that there is the partnership with the word and the spirit to conform to the image of the Christ in experience. Are we together now? And then that eternal life that has been transmuted into your spirit cannot manifest just arbitrarily. It's a product of knowledge, understanding and faith. Now you are taught the ways of God. The believer now walks in the appreciation of what Jesus has done, but also rises to a point of responsibility, knowing that I need to not add to what God has done, but partner with what God has done to make it manifest. So sometimes with all due respect, we say things like, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Of course, I know that those who say that are very well intentioned and they are sincere. But from the lens of scripture, that is not an accurate statement. How many times have you believed what God has said and agreed with it and confessed it and it did not work? Because it takes more than that. 
The entire journey of obedience is beyond the realm of confession. Confession is part of the process. But obedience is predicated on understanding. Number one, you need to know the provisions that have been there. Number two, you need to know the conditions are located for those promises to be made manifest. And then you need to obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those conditions. That is what is responsible for manifestation. Hallelujah. So I can know that Jesus died, defeated Satan, death, hell, and the grave. I can know that for a fact. But ladies and gentlemen, I can know that I've been translated from every curse. And I can even stand to declare, in the name of Jesus, there is no curse upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my grandfather worshipped this. My grandmother worshipped this. In the name of Jesus, I am free from it. And yet, after all of that confession, it looks like Satan is just watching you. And say, just finish and get out of the way for me. And then you find out that there are many people who will tell you, Apostle, I'm fasting and praying. And in the midst of the fasting and prayer, I still see demons come to oppress me. You see that? And sometimes we men of God are at a loss as to why, you know, what should have caused that now. And we say, just go. You are not serious with God. That's why. It's not true. It's not true. That person is very serious with God. That's even why Satan is oppressing the person. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because it's happening to many of us. And sometimes we come to church and we just say amen. But we live back with our various questions and our frustrations. And sooner or later, the believer will become discouraged and say, you know what? I love the Lord. I will still keep doing church. But I will really go and find a solution that befits my problem. It's why there is a mix of the Christian faith and many other extra biblical practices today. And then we say things like the word of God works and that is so true. But the average believer has not experienced perpetually the victory that is in Christ. If we are to be honest and we are to admit it, a few people may have received like trickles of rain, a few testimonies here and there, but most believers are yet to walk in the experience of this abundant life, the experience of this victory in Christ. The average believer does not have the confidence to be able to reproduce the victory in Christ here and now. It's like if it happens, let it happen. So we pray, for instance, and we say, Father, give me a job, change my life, do this and that. If it so happens, we say, wow, it happened. If it does not happen, after all, we knew it would not happen. The fundamentals of redemption it is true that you and i have authority over satan but it's important for us to understand the jurisdiction of authority and how to exercise that authority and the lord placed it in my heart that the end time church needs to walk in the reality of dominion i repeat over unclean spirits dominion over sicknesses and diseases hallelujah and then dominion over resources. This one has plagued many believers. Resources. The inability to be able to have command of the resources it takes to live a decent and a meaningful life and then to be part of God's end time program. The greatest attack that will come upon the saints will come in these three areas. Satan is fashioning a very dangerous weapon to bring upon the believers that it looks like the devil wants to make a caricature of Christians and to mock them that while we are serving God and rolling on the floor there are spirits that seem to move unhindered destroying families writing negative narratives over our lives hallelujah Elijah got angry because it looked like the silence had emboldened the prophets of Baal and he got angry one day and said you know what we're going to stop being in a straight betwixt if God be God serve him if Baal be God serve him let's go up the mountain let's prove once and for all that the God that answers by fire let that be the God listen I believe with all my heart that the end time church is going to rise with such power and grace you will see a widespread manifestation of dominion can i tell you there is no church as an institution and as a local assembly that demonstrates authority over spirits 
authority over sickness authority over resources that will be empty in this end time because the major problem of men is centered around these three things people will run anywhere they know that they can find solution over curses over spirits over yokes many of you have left your homes to come now it didn't matter to you what sermon you were going to hear your major concern was that I carried this spirit disturbing me. I transported it to Koinonia and let it sit down with me here in hope that someone with the power and the wisdom from God will be able to bring that separation. When someone leaves his home, ladies and gentlemen, and comes and sits down here, and after two, three hours, every curse, every yoke, every pronouncement upon that person gives way, and he returns back home, and the testimonies that follow liberty, testimonies that follow liberty, not assumed stories, not assumed testimonies. By Monday, doors are open as proof that Satan has left you. Tuesday, doors are open. Your loved ones say, what happened? They usually would not listen to you. But now this is a manifestation that is foreign to the history of this family. We've not seen breakthrough like this. A young boy that was, that was missing suddenly returns back home. Most people do not understand the publicity power that victory over spirits and victory over sickness and victory over resources can bring to the name of the Lord. Wait until you find a family of 10 people impoverished financially and within one month, one by one, God begins to sign. You know how you sign a register. The sister comes and God opens a door. The brother comes and God opens a door. The one who is a missionary that as though he has been cursed, all kinds of doors open. Have you seen someone who was sick and became healed? Did you not cry? As bold as you are, most people have not seen genuine healing miracles in a consistent way. The way people testify in church, sometimes you are even, it's as if they are not sure themselves. It's almost as if they were saying, just go and say something. Genuine miracles that you watch somebody who came sick with the medical reports. I was very blessed hearing the testimonies. There are notable miracles that you cannot deny. They are proof of the hand of God. Are we together? Ladies and gentlemen, the dominion of the saints must be well represented in the area of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people. My phone is full of needs. Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not able to attend to as many needs. And I say, oh God, please keep raising people. The more people are raised, the more some of us can rest. When there are few people, you, you can die prematurely because of the burden that comes. You are sleeping, that's when the time zone somewhere, someone is waking up and you see people sending scripture, apostle, I will not let you rest. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. You must do this and I'm saying, oh God. Do you know why? Because they perceive that if one word comes from you, they will be healed. Now the question is, will it really happen? Or will you dash their hopes? Many of you have come here now believing, probably you were motivated by others to say, look, come on and sit down. One prophetic word and you go back and your life will change. Now you have come and you are sitting. More than the truths I'm teaching, you are aware of the problems that brought you here. And can I tell you the truth? Any man of God who does not respect the pain and the problem of people who come to him will soon be preaching to an empty pew. People have real problems. And when they are pressed, every man's need is his point of contact. It's also his point of attention. When I'm speaking along an area of your need, you suddenly lighten up. Aha, uh -huh, my word is coming. What is he saying now? Hmm. Dominion over unclean spirits. There are many of you who are seated here now. The reason why your loved ones have refused to be saved is that they have watched your life they watch your zeal versus the performance of the word in your life and the gap is too wide to convince them and so every time you tell them i'm going to church they say save johnny 
carry this your burden of religion out of my face let me manage the spirits that i'm dealing with now whether it's through appeasal or occultic manipulation let me just be managing it there but here comes a generation ladies and gentlemen men who will understand this thing with power that we will demonstrate such levels of power dominion over this unclean spirit that it should not take one year to get spirits out of a family it should not take one year for God's sake to rewrite the story of a person one time they showed me they showed me true story I think maybe we may even be a family here they showed me the photo of one of their fathers the legs here I mean the whole thing you could see the bone because I don't know what kind of condition that was. I just know it is of the devil. I've had the honor of seeing and being part of phenomenal miracles. And even as a man of God, you will think walking in this dimension for many years will get you used to it. Every spectacular manifestation of the hand of God leaves everybody, including the vessel, in awe. You stand and you say, God, what is this? What is this? A family called me one time, a simple prayer for them, and this satanic spirit just gave way. Oh my goodness, the doors that opened for them. Now the woman, they are in UK. She's giving birth next, next month, I think, or something, and property they've not been able to. And these are people who love God. They have served God. Let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that followed you here, Provided this is koinonia and we bear the name of the Lord, it must let you go now. It must let you go now. Listen, sit down please. Behind the widespread tragedy of men, the widespread tragedy of families, parents, the widespread tragedy around your children, be it academic in nature, be it health-wise, be it career-wise, do not think any sustained problem in your family is void of the participation of spirits. The longevity factor behind any problem is because of the presence of spirits. Hallelujah. They will turn a great child with a great destiny to become like a fool in the presence of his parents and the devil will handpick from a very christian family so that he will use that as a message to make it look like serving god does not pay i hope you know that when he does these things it's not just because he's evil that he uses men as a portrait to write a letter to creation that god is not faithful so someone will say, this family that loves the Lord, missionaries, serving the purposes of God, look at the kind of useless children they build. One is a drunkard. The other one is a prostitute. The other one does not even know what he's doing. The other person is this and that. Is this how God rewards? If this is the Jesus you are bringing, I'd rather not go and hell says, come. sorry about that are we together now yes so you find out that these kinds of things is what Satan does in many families do you know that one manifestation of dominion over spirits can bring a whole region to Jesus by the time your child that everybody has concluded on that this one will never be saved because when you give him 20 naira, you know what he's going to do with it. When you give him 100 naira, the moment anything is missing in the house, you already know the thief. Not by word of knowledge, but because of the kind of spirit that is at work in that child. You are advising him, he will sit down like this. Are you going to change? Yes. The pastors will even pray. He will kneel down and say amen. And stand up from that place. Right to go and do exactly what you have said. Because it is not by might. It is not by power. While you were in that meeting, you were dealing with human bodies, but the spirits behind them were also watching you, knowing that you will waste your time. Time does not drive spirits. Anger does not drive spirits. Discussion does not drive spirits. 
Sentiments does not drive spirits. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Can I tell you, God is speaking to a family. If you do not contend for power over unclean spirits, you will lose your loved ones to Satan. You will lose your loved ones to curses. Don't wait until they kill all your parents, kill all your children, kill all your loved ones. Rise up as a believer that you are and say in the name of Jesus, I have dominion, dominion over unclean spirits. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. Listen. There are spirits that are assigned to individuals. There are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices. They are not assigned to a person. So Apostle Joshua Selman as a ministerial office has a spirit assigned to it. What is the assignment? Destroy this man. Scatter his life. Destroy whatever he represents so that the body of Christ will be affected. That is the assignment. There is a spirit assigned to me because I'm on earth. There is a spirit assigned to your family. Are we together now? There are spirits assigned to regions. As soon as you enter that region, it's like a register in the spirit. This person has arrived. There is a scan in the spirit. What authority level do you have? Nothing. This is just a noise maker, church goer. He's welcome. Join the bandwagon of slaves. So you come into a city. I want to do business in Abuja. I want to do business in Lagos. I'm a graduate. All, all that is a spirit. It's just a talk. From the realm of the spirit, you find out that you lose everything and you don't know what is happening. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are spirits that are assigned to marriages. A husband and a wife who love themselves, as soon as they say, I do, the spirits are witnesses. Two weeks later, the man is tired, wants to slap the woman. And you counsel the man and he will sit down and even be counseling others and say, be good to your wife. Be fair to people. And once it's done, you will beat his own wife. It's not that the man is evil. There are spirits. And we keep saying we have authority, but we do not have understanding. When Jesus got into, I hope you know that the spirits in Gadara were the ones who created the storm. When Jesus was on his way coming, they knew that deliverance was coming and they raised a storm. You don't tell a storm, peace be still. No. As soon as Jesus arrived, Gadara, nobody told the madman that he had arrived. The spirits knew. They were waiting for him there as soon as he arrived. What have you come to do now? And Jesus said, said do you know what? Let's negotiate. We are responsible for this place. The businesses that prosper in this place are in partnership with us. That is why immediately they left that man. Some people's businesses went down because the businesses were connected to that fraternity. So you step into Abuja and you do not know the age-long spirit. You've been prospering every other place, but bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And you may sincerely say, well, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. And you are right. But because you do not understand how to administer authority. Oh, my business starts and your staff will start stealing. Even the most honest person in your company, honest people, they start changing in ways you do not understand. And you are sincere. Sometimes you think the solution is money. You carry one million. Okay, take man of God and drive these demons. And they don't go anywhere. Because you must understand the rules of engagement. And the person goes down. There are cities when you enter, you become poor to look like the city. No matter how blessed you are, there is a spirit that makes men to look like the, the city. There are people who go abroad for 10 years, 20 years. They excel. But it's like a trajectory. They come down when they are 80, 70 years old. They become like they are yesterday. And they will tell you stories. I was once in the White House. I was once, and you are saying, so what happened to you? Hallelujah. There are spirits that are responsible for stunting growth and advancement. So the moment out of a family of 10 people, you suddenly emerge and you are the person rising. 
you don't have to be bad. The fact that in your rising is the salvation of many, here comes the spirits assigned to you. And you just hear that the breadwinner of this family just died in an accident. One mad bike man just came. He did not just come. You are just watching physical things there. There are spirits assigned. I'm saying to someone again, in the name of my God and your God, every spirit that has been assigned to mock God over your life, may it give way right now. 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 Hallelujah. You see, there are many ways to enjoy the authority that immunes you against sickness or against unclean spirits. Number one is your personal understanding. Your personal understanding of the finished work of Christ. It has to be a personal revelation for you. Number two, the advantage of prophetic covering. Listen carefully. I'm showing you the ways that God designed for believers to be immune. Number one is a product of your personal revelation of the finished work of Christ. That means as a personal responsibility, you go to understand the implication of his death, burial, resurrection, how that he defeated Satan, sin, hell, and the grave. He resurrected triumphant, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. What that means to you, and then the advantage of prophetic covering. You know the advantage of prophetic covering because everybody will come into this understanding gradually. So prophetic covering was put to midwife your victory while you learn and while you grow. That is why there are people, the moment they become connected to certain visions, even before they come into certain levels of understanding, they enjoy certain privileges. Are we together now? Remember when the blood was put on the lintel of the nation of Israel. It didn't matter the personal belief of the person in the room. Provided there was blood on the lintel, everybody within that room, even if you were an armed robber, you were saved from the angel of death. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. I have seen wicked spirits in my vision. I know what they do to families. Sometimes I am pained when I watch the ignorance of believers. They just assume that just because Jesus has died, everything automatically is gone. No, let me show you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Give us from verse 6 to verse 9. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Please let me have your attention. Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. The word yes, Elohim. A little lower than God. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of your hands. Read verse 8 with me please. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Uh -huh. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under his feet. The tragedy is in the last line. Read on please. But now we see not yet all things under him. Just stop there. Are you seeing that now? Paul is the one who was given the privilege of what we call the Pauline epistles. He understood redemption from a standpoint of divine revelation. And Paul is saying in as much as it is true, that in Christ, victory has been accorded every believer. But he says now, experientially, we do not yet see all things under his feet. It is true that no cause should walk in your life. But now, we do not yet see the manifestation of that victory. Because mama is still crying. The young men are still in bondage. The women are still feeding the men in that family. It ought not to be so. Now your assignment as a believer is to number one, regardless your condition, to believe that the truths that have been captured as far as Christ's finished work will not change. Let God be true and all men liars. Then number two, to take the responsibility to know 
that between prophecy and manifestation, there is something you need to understand and there is something you need to engage. This is a missing link for many people, especially among the Pentecostal charismatic circles. So we just leave everything to God and say, don't worry. Or at best, we believe the only thing we should do is just to speak. I believe in speaking the word. But if the only thing you do in terms of destiny actualization is speaking the word, you may live a painful Christian experience laced with all kinds of disappointments because speaking is not the only thing you are mandated to do. There are actions of obedience based on what scripture has given us and based on the Rima word that comes by the spirit as a unique strategy for you. If the nation of Israel kept shouting before Jericho, in the name of Jesus, Jericho, you must go down. They would have died for nothing. Beyond speaking, a strategy was given to them and they walked in obedience and that's what brought Jericho down. Listen to me. I want to challenge you. I have seen this in my visions and the word of God confirms it. There, are, there is an onslaught of wicked spirits being released in this end time over ministries, over men of God, over families. Walking in spiritual ignorance will be a costly bargain in this end time. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Satan sees that that lady, that gentleman will rise to become the horn that exalts the family. All of a sudden leads to the next one. You will start seeing mysterious sicknesses. Have you seen people with all due respect who were say AA? All of a sudden they now find out that they were SS for instance. And they cannot explain where that came from. Or you find someone who has been healthy, living a responsible life. And the next thing they say you are having HIV. HIV from where? Sorry you are having HIV. That's the end of discussion. Or someone just begins to feel pain side of your chest anywhere and then it's it looks like child's play until they tell you sorry from what we are seeing you've been having cancer in the last three years cancer where did it come from i eat healthy i've done my best ladies and gentlemen this is more than a health issue there are spirits their assignment is to take you out of the way for the sake of those who will be blessed by your life but again, I'm praying for somebody. In the name of Jesus, you came for Koinonia tonight. If there is any sickness in your body, whether you have detected it or not, that is growing to become any blood disease or any cancerous statement in your life as sickness, you are a man and it looks like a large prostrate is growing to become cancer or cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer. I don't care what it is called. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I told you a story here years ago. This happened in Zaria. True story. A woman who was pregnant and in her dream, she would always see like monkeys. True story. Come, you know, to molest her and all of that. And she just shrugged it over. True story. She had a stillbirth as she gave out, gave birth to a hairy child looking physically like monkeys. Ministry is like medicine. You will see all kinds of things that you would not have believed except that it is right before you. I have seen a woman who got pregnant. Her husband had died oh. She got pregnant because a spirit came to molest her and physically she started getting pregnant. And you see, as a man of God, all those problems is you, they bring it to you. Everybody just runs to you and say, look, just know what to do with me because this one is a spirit. Don't get into end time ministry if you don't have power. You will make a mockery of yourself, your family and the name of Jesus. Are we together now? Yeah. Let's talk about sicknesses and disease. I have taught you, Koinonia, that sickness is an, a gradual administration of death 
upon a person. Now, the way God designed his system, let me repeat for your understanding, is that everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime. Please do not forget this. We are given the privilege of one body to host your spirit per lifetime. Lifetime meaning the period from when you are born until you finally transit out of this realm. You are given the liberty to have one body per lifetime. And maintaining that body is important for your longevity. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the commonest ways that Satan takes people out of this realm before their time, knowing the laws that God created around living, is that he afflicts your body, listen please, so that your body deteriorates. Now there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body. When your body deteriorates beyond that point, your spirit will have to leave, whether you are done with your assignment or not. So when Satan sees that this person, it looks like there's nothing we can do with that person, sickness comes into your body. And what happens is that it starts to deteriorate your body and it gets to a point where your body can no longer host your spirit. And at that point, you will have to leave. Hallelujah. This is what happened to the man Elisha. Even though he was an anointed man of God, you will think as anointed as Elisha was, a man who could heal anything, he died of sickness. It was sickness that killed him and the anointing was still in him. And that anointing was there in the bones and it raised the dead body back to life. Yet it killed the one, the one who had it could not benefit from it because there are rules of engagement. Are we together? They were bringing a dead body and the dead body fell and touched the bones of Elisha and jacked back to life. What a miracle. And yet the person, the owner of that body became sick until he died. Can I tell you this? If you entertain sickness in your body, it will bring you untimely death. Believe me, Satan is a stubborn spirit. If he administers a dimension of sickness and you give flimsy excuses around it and don't deal with it. When you are dealing with sickness, use every scriptural means to deal with it. The bam in Gilead, the power of the Holy Ghost, attack it every... That is why I will never teach you to ignore medicine. I believe in the supernatural. I will administer the supernatural till the day I see his face. But I am a responsible man of God and I will not teach people to ignore medicine. If your faith has not grown to a level where the power of God becomes active to keep you strong, do not feel guilty. Take responsibility and see a doctor. Come for koinonia and we pray for you while we all keep growing. Are we together now? That is responsible Christianity. Many Christians in a bid to practice faith without guidance and with wisdom have deteriorated their health in a way that it could be managed simple things that, and satan is an opportunist the moment he sees a loophole are we together now for one year you've been having severe pain around the heart doesn't matter what i just know plus jesus might not satan careless christian experience and many people embrace it that way until they tell you, ah, if you had come two years ago, would have been able to work on this. You've been having internal bleeding for years. You've not cared to check it. It is your responsibility to work in partnership with the word of God, to work in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit, to keep this body healthy enough for your spirit to remain comfortable as you serve God. Are we together now? Years ago, someone sent a text that he saw me dying. He said, my friend, please get out of my way with all that kind of revelation. Is it easy like that to die? Hallelujah. Many people say, I shall not die, but leave. They are already on their way to the grave because they do not know what it takes to make prophecy 
become manifestation. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is dishonoring every parent, dishonoring every father, dishonoring everyone. The person who is saying, I shall not die but live, is eating anything he finds in front of him, even when he needs to or not. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is not serving the purposes of God. You are on your way dying for sure. You see that now? There are many scriptures that are connected to longevity, freedom, liberty from sickness. One is, I shall not die, but live and declare. That means if your life is not advancing the kingdom, you will be a victim in this end time. It's not a threat, it's the truth. Ah, there are people that God will not allow to die. His jealousy will defend them. They are too useful for his program. Too useful for his program. Hezekiah turned his face and said, God, you want to kill me? Remember, who will fund your project? Who will bring glory to your name? How many of us can stand and look at the spirit of death to the face and look at God who is the judge of all the earth and say, Lord, remember my work in Koinonia. Remember my partnership. Remember my giving. Rem how many people pray for apostles? Remember, it's a project. Show me a man who is doggedly involved in the program of God. I show you somebody who the devil will be forced to stay far from. Claiming blessings without the conditions connected to them is what will keep making a mockery of people. Are we together? I can tell you there are people who the God will never allow the devil take their lives. Many children eat because they are alive. Many people go to school because they are alive. There are many preachers today who are comforted and have left the way of compromise, courtesy, their help and their partnership. No devil will take them out of the way. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but live and declare. Number two, it says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Is that in your Bible? That it may be well with you and that you may live long. There are many people who will stand and look at their parents to their face, insult them, insult every man of God, and they don't know they are programming death. They think they are expressing themselves. And before you know it, you are dividing your years times two. And the person gets up one morning and then he just says, a bike man just killed me. No, sir. All these things you call coincidences, there are no coincidences in the spirit. Is a product of intentional programming. As for me, I've made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, when my assignment is done, I will not die the kind of death that brings reproach to the name of the Lord. With all due respect to those who have done, who have gone, I honor them. Thank God they made heaven. But me, I've chosen the template of my own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe it. Don't serve God in fear and live a defeated life. Ah, this body will not carry cancer in the name of Jesus. This body will not carry, I don't know whatever name it is called, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in this body, I decree and declare, I will weary every devil and everything. This body must host my spirit for my lifetime as appointed by God. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you are hearing tonight? There are many preachers who have not taken out time to meditate on divine health, to meditate on long life. Let me give you a counsel. If you are a man of God and you've not sat down to meditate on these things, please do so. If not, your schedules will be the very reason you will go to the grave. Hallelujah. We've had roller coaster meetings from Enugu to Lagos to Abelkuta to Lagos and back here. After service, seeing people and doing a lot of things. You keep doing, you cannot fake this thing, oh. If this grace is not at work in you, one day you will just wake up and see that you are either in ICU or maybe you are just before the throne. And it's not like it's a vision, you are gone. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You make up your mind 
intentionally. You don't say I shall not die because you are afraid. No, we are already victorious. If Jesus comes today to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. The advocacy for long life and health is not because of the fear of death. It is because there is much to be done for the kingdom and you require your body to host your spirit. Are we together now? Say I shall not die. Don't keep quiet. Oh. Say I shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. You come from a family where the devil kills people with all due respect. People died before their time. I like you this night while you are listening to me. Make, get, let a holy anger rise in your spirit that it will be from me. This untimely death, this spirit that comes upon people and just waste their life. There are those the moment they are getting to 46, 47, 48, they start becoming afraid, moody and emotional because when you cross 50 from those families, that is even a testimony. Hallelujah. He gave them power. Gave them power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Give it to us please. And when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against, are you seeing the pattern now? Unclean spirits to cast them out. Then to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. He sent them with a message, verse 7, as ye go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Prove the reality of that kingdom, verse 8, by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, cast out, um, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. When you read from verse 9, the next thing is talking about supplies. It's always been in that order. You deal with spirits, your body. I'm coming to the issue of supplies. But my assignment is to speak to the body of Christ. There is a, a need for a heightened awareness of the principles that truly make for health and longevity. May God forbid that you wake up one morning and just find out that somebody you loved has gone. I know that most of us here, we've lost loved ones, no problem. There's nothing we can do. We thank God that they are in Christ. But since you are alive, you have a chance now to define your reality. Do you know there are people right now who, based on the satanic programming, they are not supposed to see December 31st. They are alive, oh, they are already working now, but they are part of the list. From now till December, this one, let's try accident. If it does not work, try a satanic migraine headache. Oh, this one is pregnant. She's getting to nine months. Can we use it as an opportunity? This had delivery now. This can be an opportunity to kill her. And the spirits kill it. And that's why the Bible said no weapon fashioned. Weapons are fashioned. They are fashioned by studying your life. This man is a man of God. Most likely he will be laying hands on a lot of people. Can we program people with communicable diseases so that as he's laying hands, something will come upon him and kill him? This man is a businessman. The easiest way to kill him is to make him lose 10 billion naira within one month. What do you think? From there he will plunge into depression. He may run to a herbalist and on his way coming back, both him and the goat he carried will die on the way. That's the plan. Are we together? Yeah. And while all that scheming is happening and these spirits are planning from the realm of the spirit, all they hear is a sound like thunder. Shabakatoskiata. Pradoka paruska vedika. Shadika paruske. Empregete bakatosa pragata. Makoske barusiata. Ah, you are there in your room, oh. You are there in your room. Listen. Jesus was not invited to hell. He entered. Oh, it's in your Bible. 
Nobody gave him any invitation. The Bible says he showed up. He just said it is finished. And the next thing they see him there, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Listen, one of these days, you will find yourself in a meeting where you need to settle some things. You will start praying on earth till you find yourself in the realm of the spirit. And you will see books with the names of your loved ones. And you will tear them into pieces and say, this is what has kept this family bound. This is what has destroyed this family. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.